This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It's time to get awesome, get geeky. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorgat Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, wonderful Beachview neighborhood here in Pittsburgh, PA. Looking out at the storm clouds now. I like the rain. I like the rain. That means it's not sunny. That means you're not. You're not. Uh, we don't have John Chichilla complaining about his his baked his baked hams. My, my baked legs. Your baked hams. As we it were is, listening it is, to. It is nice and overcast. It so is. It's a, it's a perfect. Listen, man, my podcast. Gray day in Pittsburgh. My podcast is only happy when it rains. Uh, John Chinchilla, big ga- uh, gadget guru, a big bank international esquire. How you doing this week? Not too bad. I'm wondering if we're gonna work as many like show lyrics or song lyrics into our. You were really show as big possible. on it as I was setting up the microphones <laughs> today. Jeez. Um, but anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything on AwesomeCast.com. Right, Chilla. Yes, exactly. We should. I, I want to start a thing where we, we just. I just like hand it back and forth to you, <laughs> and you do the intro with me. Uh, <laughs> go hit us up, uh, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia dot com if you're interested in being in studio, or if you have uh, any interest in advertising opportunities here with the Awesome Cast. Thank you. We actually had a couple of news new uh, advertisers over the last uh, <clears throat> month. Our friends at Mat- Mattress Factory. Um, thanks to our friends over at Post Industrial. Uh, check all those guys out, and of course, uh, please hit us at awesomecast on on the Twitter and the Facebook page. Also, the, the great Facebook group where we get some stories from you guys and we'll have some stuff there in the show for you from you as well. Um, also, you can catch us live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Awesome Cast Facebook page. We're a few other places as well streaming. Maybe you got the notification if you're catching us live. But the chat room that we do pay attention to as much as we can is over at the Awesome Cast Facebook page. Subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on the the Facebook and YouTube, and you can also ask your Google Home and your Amazon Echo to play us on Google Music Podcast, Google Podcast, Tune In, whatever app you have connected that you have us subscribed on there, and that your device is not being testy about playing. Um, I guess, I guess technically, you uh, you could also on your um, uh, Apple HomePod, right? Yeah, you can. I yeah. can say. I can say. Yeah, you can say, hey, hey, hmm, uh, hey, S Train. What was what was the, what was her name? Did we have a train? I don't her? know if we had a name for her. I'm going to go with a train. I know we had a train for so other podcasts. You shlomo for a train. So, yeah. Uh, and thank you to our friends, streaming partners at Rivers Edge, PGH.com <clears throat> and the 405 media.com. Check your uh, local listings over there for times that we are streaming. Thanks for helping us get out there to a bigger audience. Uh, around the globe. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore, as well as John Carmen. At the fan of the show, $1 level, our longest Patreon supporter, Michael Fedor. You guys can support the show, too, at patreon.com slash awesomecast. We just rolled over to the new month. Thank you so much, everybody, who uh, did contribute for this past month on Awesome Cast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. What do you got FaceTime doing over there, uh, Chilla? So this was an interesting one, and I didn't know. I I don't was this covered, or did anyone even talk about this? Mm-hmm. Like after WWDC, yeah, there's a so, lot coming so, out of WWDC. Yeah, so. so iOS 13 beta three landed today, um, and often after a new beta lands, I'm not in the developer beta anymore. I lost, I temporarily lost access to it, so I'm mm-hmm. in the normal beta with the rest of the beta humanity um okay i'm in the open beta i'm like the public beta the I'm public not in beta. The developer beta are you in beta jail no i'm not in beta jail okay because of the way because of the things introduced in ios 13 you have to do a bunch of extra steps mm-hmm. to be able to use the corporate 
the oh, corporate oh. free developer because you with the big bank international yes. and stuff okay so um i'm in the public beta so i'll probably get this next week mm-hmm. but um nine to five mac always does a really good job of listing out what's changed from version to version if you scroll down the page until you see the guy the, it's like a four up of a guy's eyes um facetime now has attention correction your eye contact with the camera will be more accurate during FaceTime video calls. Mm. So it's augmenting the eye to, to of where you're looking, and it makes it look like you're looking at the camera. Because you, cause if you ever FaceTimed or Skyped or anything mm-hmm. with that, you tend to like look at the person's eyes in the video. It's not like you look up at the camera. Mm-hmm. So it always looks like the person's looking kind of down. Mm-hmm. This is going to auto-correct that. Or off to the side or something, yeah. depending on what you're doing. Yeah, so this will auto-correct that. It, re- it kind of reminds me of Skype will auto-frame mm-hmm. your face where it will crop out the left, right, top, bottom and kind of try to zoom in just on your face mm-hmm. in, the, in the video. It kind of reminds me of that, but they're actually altering how w- or what it looks like what you're looking at. I thought, it was, I thought it was a pretty neat technology, kind of scary at the same time. <laughs> but um, that you're not what you're seeing is not really what you're seeing. Well, it's one of those things. Like if, if you're on a video conference for work mm-hmm. and you had something like this, I could be I could be playing a video game and it's going to look it's like going to auto correct. It's going like, huh. to like look like I'm looking right at you. It'd be shoot or, or is it just going to look weird because you're looking so far off? Well, I think I it's mean, one of those things where you. You can't like physically turn your head way to the side. Yeah, that'd be kind of creepy. It just looks for that little bit of change, right? Mm-hmm. Like because because your eye isn't looking that far that you notice that it's 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 you know the the camera over here and not here or up here and not here. But if you're even just in like, here, like I'm looking at you, I'm yeah. not looking. This is me looking at the camera. This yeah. is me looking at Sork. Yeah, this is me looking at the camera. Like I don't yeah. know how well you can see that on video, but when you're this close. Um, on the camera, I, I think it comes off. So sorry, audio podcasters. <laughs> but, but generally, we're demonstrating like you, you're not looking like you're looking a few inches difference. Right. Right. Uh, you know, eye line and everything and, and myself doing that. My camera's already over here, so I'm not really talking to them. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's how it goes. Um, interesting. It, 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 so so it'll be it'll be well, they already have with FaceTime and our Snapchat videos and everything, all these like kind of face altering things. It just seems like such a small, easy thing for them to do. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. So uh, I'll be interested to see what what more they add. Obviously we have the new what do they call their little avatars? Hmm? The avatars in FaceTime. Oh, Animoji? The Animoji. Yeah. They have the new Animoji makeup that's already in there. Mm-hmm. I thought the new app animation for TVOS kind of gives you like a nice like z- launch the app and it kind of zooms into the app. And then when mm-hmm. you put it away, it kind of slowly fades back to the, the screen. I thought that was cool. But no, the the attention setting, I thought was attention correction. Oh, I'm sorry. Memoji. 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 I'm corrected by Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast in the chat room. So, um, awesome. So, a FaceTime autocorrection coming. Uh, and so, have you have you seen this in action? I have not. I'm hoping I'll get it next week. Okay. Oh, it hasn't rolled out to your. your it'll, what'll yet. be interesting is we'll have to test if I can get it. If I get it next week, it'll be interesting. Like, if I turn on FaceTime autocorrection and I'm still on twelve, and you're still on twelve. Does it? Because oh. it's sending the vi- it's the video send. So, right? which side is doing it? Yeah, I'm guessing it's. The uh, person's the, side, the 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 the, re- the sender or the receiver, the sender, the sender. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Um, so producer Missy has an awesome thing, and this this harkens me back to some episodes of The Office from the looks of things. Yeah, this is this is actually only awesome because it made me laugh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Google Maps. Most of us use Google Maps in order to try to to navigate. And the nice thing is that if you get stuck in traffic, you can always pull up your handy dandy Google Maps or Waze or whatever, and it will give you an alternate route. So folks were using folks were using uh, their their Google Maps in order to get directions to the Denver airport. and, there was a 
detour route that they were all taking, and it turns out that that detour route, it took them off the beaten path into an open field. No, it wasn't an open field. It was like a dirt path between oh. some fields. But it was a dirt path that was in an open field. Okay. So it was more like uh, a cow path, essentially. Mm-hmm. L- literally a cow path in a field. And, and so um, so the, the, the pileup on the highway happened because of the, uh, the, the, the weather, because it had rained for, for about three days, according to this. So, so that messed up the main route, sent people down this one. And being a dirt road, it can't handle the bulk of this, and people got stuck. Wow. I just envision like a an Apple or Microsoft keynote where this gets brought up. Yeah, just like, <laughs> and we will be doing X so that you don't get stuck in a cow pasture. Yeah, um, it, 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 this is. I mean, we, we've we've all been on these, and they'll take like weird back ways. And there's even some neighborhoods are upset because there's more traffic because of people taking you know those those off road you know uh, uh, irregular kind of paths right like through neighborhoods you know well you know just even in pittsburgh or something or through a, through a neighborhood out there um you know so they're they're getting more traffic and this is just residential they, they're not they're not really up for that right so oh geez um so so uh my my awesome thing is that i can't play harry potter I just can't. You do can't, it. or you won't. Get, there are two things that happen to me. You Chilla. are unable to. There are two things that happen to me, Chilla. Every time I watch an anime, it just makes me want to tune into Cowboy Bebop. And every time I boot up and try to get into Harry Potter, I just want to play a Pokemon Go. Oh, really? So that's what it does to you. It that's makes what you, it does to me. It's like, why aren't I playing Pokemon? Yeah, Go? I just that's like interesting. Wait, wait. Why am I going to build this from scratch? I got Pokemons mm-hmm. to catch. I I'm at level what thirty two or whatever. So you're not one of those people that. When you get to the top level in Pokemon, you're going to reset and start over. Uh, yeah, I did. Like, I just found out there is a top level. Yeah. So. Did you Did you prestige Call of Duty? Did I, did I what? So, like, did you ever play the Call of Duty games online? Uh, I, I I did like like a long time ago. So when you get to like whatever the top level is, sixty or whatever it is. Oh that, no! Ask Chachi about and you that one. Top out. Mm-hmm. Like you can prestige. Where I think you get to take one weapon with you, you get mm-hmm. to keep one of your weapons, but then you start you all start over, over again. Yeah. But you get like you get a star that's next some, to your name. That's or something Chachi did. Like that's something Chachi yeah. did. I, I hit lot. the top. I'm gonna just stay at the top. I don't need to start back over again. Mm-hmm. But so, it, it gives you something to progress through, right? You'll be like, well, I can build it up again yeah. and, and do that. It gives you a reason to keep playing. Or you can just be online. awesome. Or you- <laughs> at you're, the top, you're one of those guys that just absolutely mur- You're the reason I don't play Call of Duty anymore. No, I wasn't that good. No, I never made it to the top. But you're just saying, you know, your your dreams of getting to the top of Call of Duty. Yes. So, hey, you know what's also awesome and feeding us here on the awesome cast, our friends at Slice on Br- what's that? Oh, sorry. Oh, I, no, I was I wanted to talk more about the Harry Potter, but oh no, talk, no, no, okay, we wait, can wait, talk. Wait, wait, we'll, we'll, we'll take a second. Uh, Harry Potter. What, what about Harry Potter? So have you been? So playing I have a question, and mm-hmm. and I don't know if anyone else is out there playing as as I'm actually talking and and scrolling through. Um, foundables that are around the studio um <laughs> how's it look uh, there's one two three four there's four foundables do i need this one this is my problem so i would consider myself fortunately or unfortunately and i don't know if there's like a game time thing here but like i've put a lot of time into this mm-hmm. like I've cast 59 potions, or I've used 59 potions. I've dined at um, ends 199 times. I've placed 68 of 250 images in the registry. Um, Let me find another high number. I've cast 208 defensive defensive spells. I've picked up 159 ingredients on the map, et cetera, et cetera, to say the least. Um, I feel like I keep finding the same things. And what you, uh, the whole point is is that you find a new thing and you find so many of them and then you, play, you place them in your registry, which to me is just kind of like a sticker book. But, like, I always find the same things. Like, I, I'm not finding anything new. And I don't know if it's because I'm always taking the same path, 
But even like when I tried to venture briefly out into the city today into areas that I don't normally walk, I really couldn't find things that I hadn't already found. Mm-hmm. So I, it's like well, the, it's, Pokemon was like that too. Pokemon wasn't it? was like, like I want to find out just weedles everywhere. Yeah, but like I don't. I I wish, and maybe it's because I played Pokemon for so long and got to collect this huge inventory of Pokemon, mm-hmm. and I want to do the same thing. But I f- I feel like, I don't know. I'm in this weird it, it's, it's so, stuck so state. I I I think the biggest thing for me is Pokemon was something I was kind of on the fringe aware of right like it, you know, we talked about like ingress r- last week where i was like well i couldn't really get into ingress because you kind of had to learn the concept you know and wrap your head around mm-hmm. it this is like oh i go around and catch pokemon this is easy i know what a pokeball is okay potions do it like when, when i i'm looking at this there's so much that i feel like i would understand off the bat if i was more of a harry potter fan right yeah and i don't find myself to be like a huge fan. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, there are plenty. I'm not saying that this is a failing of the game. I think it is a failing of me and my connection with the game. Well, if if I can add in, we're actually getting some comments from the chat room as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Amanda agrees. The mall is a repetitive hotbed, mm-hmm. so she needs to go downtown. And she actually indicated that she got a snitch at the bank. So, a, a, snitch, seems- a snitch is a Harry Potter thing. <laughs> yeah, it's the little ball you chase around on the Nimbus. You, you mean it's not the guy that gets stitches in jail? No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, mm-hmm. And then Potter actually commented for Pittsburgh this weekend, uh, they're furries, not Harry Potter creatures to catch. That's right. We do get the furries in town this weekend. Are you going to go down and uh, furry watch a little bit, Chilla? I, I, I don't think I will be in town. Oh, no. We, I have to be, we're doing a cookout for 4th of July. We have some st- I have to redo some stuff around the house on friday and then we're heading to heading briefly out of town on saturday so i don't mm-hmm. think i'll make it down there oh. Which I, it's odd i didn't see any today usually they start showing up mm-hmm. like they start cropping up like pokemon down there <laughs> and i <laughs> i didn't see anyone all. dressed up or any tails wagging as they walk down the street oh they're coming they're coming well i don't know which days i don't know if it's just around fourth of july or if it's that with that weekend i can't recall uh, but i'd be interested in hearing so, Amanda, let me know if you find that many different mm-hmm. Pokemon or uh, Harry Potter do you things find, downtown. Do you find with Harry Potter so far, I think we talked about this briefly last week about how, or maybe I heard it on our podcast, where Pokemon Go has been built up over time. And Harry Potter, we just dropped into it. Are we? Did Harry Potter start with the bare minimum? of things you can do with it or do you feel like it is the first step and it like is it is it i feel, a, I feel a, like they went to step six they went to step six of pokemon go right yeah because there's maybe that's why i'm overwhelmed that's how i feel in certain cases like like when you brew a potion i didn't even realize you could tap the spoon and do like a, a yeah input like a gesture that lets you do shortcuts i think the gesture thing is kind of a cool thing generally i think it's kind of a cool thing mm-hmm. um but but again i'm just like i'm finding people in casing ice and i i'm not again i haven't done a whole lot with it but well that's normal i mean the people case of ice that's the normal it's a normal thing you find that's the normal thing you find that's that, that's your that's your that's your weedle and pidgeys yes okay that trapped that's in true. ice and trapped in bubbles you know what i feel sorry sometimes about- wrapped in vines oh i feel sorry for people that have no idea about harry potter or pokemon and listening to this conversation, because <laughs> we're translating the two together. Oh, they'll 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 be running out looking for for pokey wizards, pokey wizards. <laughs> I think that applies somewhere. There's like, there is magic in Pokemon. Yes, there is. Well, there's the dust. There is the dust. There's the stardust. Um, but anyways, uh, how about let's talk about magic pizza ness? Our friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good while now. We got it in here. We got we're we're feeding the podcasters. That's how we have so much um great energy here, isn't that right, Chilla? Because we've just been uh, uh um uh pepperoni pepperoni. Pe- yeah, we've got pepperoniified, right? 
Oh, it is so. delicious. And you even got some sausage tonight. I was that was a surprise. Uh, yeah, we have, well, we have a lot coming in between this show and and uh, tonight on the Wrestling Mayhem show. But, we try to feed both shows here, but and I, of but course, these guys have been helping us for a good while now here in the Beachview. Four locations: Beachview, Carnegie East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And uh, again, we do we do do on the other. You know, a lot more people out of town are uh, watching us over on Wrestling Mayhem show. So we have this little campaign. I think I've only mentioned a couple of times here um, because there is the the the, the, the expansion, their stickers don't even have all four locations on them right now uh, that we got a couple weeks ago. But if you are not in Pittsburgh, or maybe you're traveling and you want to help Slice on Broadway on their global expansion, uh, go take a picture of a Broadway in that town and tweet them at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and t- say them that you want to Slice on that Broadway, wherever that may be, or your Broadway if it's your hometown. So go check that out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Thanks to them for supporting our shows here at Sorgatron Media. All right, we have some stories here. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a story. Speaking of Anthrocon, um, I see we do have do 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 do. Um, there there was an article about the furry convention. Um, and I think this is the dates and everything. Uh, over on the Pittsburgh uh, Post Gazette, uh, so so the Anthrocon is going to run Thursday through Sunday downtown. So that, I think that's why you haven't seen anybody yet because you're still like two days out, Chilla. I think you'll probably see a few people rolling in tomorrow, more likely. Okay, so. and there, there's a parade. There is a parade. When is that parade? 2 p.m. Saturday at the convention center. 2 p.m. Saturday at the convention center. Uh, so man, I'm going to have to see if I can swing down for that. I do have a wrestling show to go to, but, uh, uh, go check that out. Uh, if you have not done this yet, uh, you know, there is the parade, but also if you happen to find yourself downtown, probably Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, we, and I don't know if this is the scourge of these days, but this is what it used to be. I think before they did a parade and before they realized everybody wants to see the furries and, and they did the parade situation. Um, and I do have a video of, I believe, last year's parade. But uh, if you if you roll into the Weston lobby, just 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 stroll in, you'll see the furries. There they are. Or even just just that end of the cultural distri- district, you'll run into a lot of them too. They're just hanging out there. They need to make a plan for the Google Street View car to drive <laughs> by, line line the sidewalks with the furries. Yes. And drive the Street View car I down. Think that might, but there could the be an opportunity for that. That would be right? a lot of fun. Jeez. Oh, from the chat. All right. Well, uh, when we get to social media and everything, of course, we have to somewhat sort of get political uh, when it comes to things. And uh, the Riz shared with us. Of course, Riz is our, our friend with Riz Plays Games. So he's keeping an eye in that world. He lives in that world more than I do. I, I've been, of course, playing with it. You see a lot of uh, our content from Sorgatron Media streaming over there. A lot of our content from over on... Um, over on uh, uh, IndieWrestling.us is playing over there. But apparently, and I'm trying to pull it up here. Oh, I think it's. I think what I need to do is hit this. Bernie Sanders is running his own Twitch channel. Oh, they're, they're, don't go away. They'll be right back. Uh, <laughs> which nothing <laughs> I is happening say much. right There's, now. Okay. I wouldn't say he's running it. Um, Riz says, I don't know how I feel about this. Hey, that's how uh, Bernie stays cool with the, the young kids. Um, stays hip. So, so Missy has uh, some more information on this. Uh, it, so he, he launched the Twitch channel. He's one of the first presidential candidates uh, with a presence on the video game streaming service. Uh, now, I don't know if this is like dedicated content for Twitch. I imagine they're doing so- something similar to what we're doing. And maybe this is on Periscope, YouTube, um, Facebook Live as well. Uh, but uh, it, it's... The, but you got to be everywhere where your your potential base and voters may be. And, and, and if nobody else is on Twitch, you definitely kind of stick out for it, don't you? Well, I think well, the other benefit also is that Bernie Sanders appeals to a lot of the younger crowd. Mm-hmm. And by being on a video game platform, I think that he's kind of leaning into his audience under the circumstances. Mm-hmm. I think that's it, or, or or discovering new, you know, in that audience too. So, well, what's uh, the average age of a Twitch viewer? That's a good question. I wonder if there, like it hits a demographic that you can't get anywhere else. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, like not on Twitter, not on Instagram, not on. The average age of a Twitch active user is twenty-one years old. What's the average age of a Instagram user? 
I could Google this too, but Missy. That's what I'm faster. doing. Missy's right on her. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is my job over here. Uh, biggest demographic group of males are between the ages of 18 and 24. Ah, so Instagram. it's kind of the same. It might be the same. Dem- I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what, like, if you looked at Twitch versus Instagram versus whatever, mm-hmm. is he making sure that he hits? All of the different age ranges across all of the demographics. It's a smart thing to do. Yep. Smart thing to do. I now, do need to say, though, that I'm surprised that it's the biggest demographic of users for Instagram are males between the age of 18 and 24. Uh, no, that makes sense. There, there's a lot of lady pics. I bet a you, lot I, of I lady wonder, pics. So well, I and wonder, that's, I think, why I thought that it would be more women is because of the lady pics. Yeah. Oh, no, I guess, but is it viewers or... Content creators, uh, users log in daily is what it's, is what this. No, no, I think, stat. I think I think your active users. So what you see on Instagram are like the, you know, the the fashion, the models, the the you know, the girls trying to do, be that influencer, right? And you know, slash, you know, I mean, for me, I see you know, pro wrestlers, you know, girl eyes, and um, and porn stars actually do use it to a great effect. Uh, we learned with the Michelle James interview on Personal Current. Um, I'm trying not to dive into that because I don't want to mess with my algorithm on there. Uh, but <laughs> well, I was wondering if you were going to segue into the the story that Dutters has. Uh, well, that will be later. Because um, <laughs> I read the title and I'm like, oh man, okay. Um, but anyways, uh, what was I? There was a point I was trying to make at this. Yeah, no, I mean you're influencers, so that's what you see more of. But I, I don't know. Um, also, Amanda, Amanda's saying that Apple News uh, just came out with flashcards for the Democratic, uh, uh, Democratic uh, candidates. Wait, they're flashcards? Flashcards? As in the candidates need flashcards or people well, need flashcards so because there are so many Democratic who's candidates? Who's what? Maybe a little bit. So. Well, the number of Democratic candidates are, is Ridiculous. astounding this we year. We did interview last week on Pittsburgh Current the 25th candidate for the presidential uh, uh, candidacy. And so. didn't we have someone else uh, indicate their presidency, <laughs> their uh, their presidential oh, yeah. candidacy I think on the Wrestling announced Mayhem some, Show? I think somebody announced on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, but I don't know what number he's at. He's like thirty five <laughs> or something by now. But anyways, there shouldn't be there shouldn't be more candidates than there are people who have been president. Um, also, while we are skirting the edges of uh, p- politicizing uh, this show, uh, <laughs> Riz also shared because he's on a roll. Um. Yeah, creepy males outweigh women making money off creepy males. There you go. <laughs> also, probably true for Pornhub, but that's for Katie to check out for us. Um, over at Kotaku, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo came out against Trump's sheriffs on gaming consoles. This is going to be part of the China trade war thing going on, but I do believe this has been rescinded or delayed as far as this, and I think also the ones that would affect Apple have been as well. Um, that I've seen in some headlines. So I, I, I was wondering about that because it's, it's, hey, hey, guys, that's all the stuff we use. I mean, half the stuff here is from China. It's on my desk. So, you know, whatever we're doing with that, I, I, you know, I'm not going to get into all of that. But this is, this is something that is happening that can affect us on the tech side. So here's the question. If this, if this continues... And we do get tariffs and we raise the prices on things like your Xbox, your PS4, your Nintendo Switches. Chilla, does that mean um, things like Google Stadia maybe benefited from this? Uh, if it's obscene enough, right? Go, if it's obscene enough. what we're, But here's the thing. I, my only problem with this is if the company feels that the tariff wouldn't be long lived Mm -hmm. i could see them maybe eating the tariff Mm -hmm. here and the only reason i say this is because so when coffee crop is bad and bad enough to the point where like coffee shops have to raise the price of their coffee never ever have they raised the price of coffee because it got more expensive, and then when it got less expensive in the commodities market, did they lower the price back down? So my fear would be that they would raise the price. Kind of how ga- gas never went down? Yeah. Even though the, the price of a barrel has? Yes. So what what I worry 
is that if they raise the price of the console, mm-hmm. are we going to see that price never, ever... I mean, obviously, you have Black Friday sales, and you'll have you know, the whole used market and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But what would worry me is that we would never... If the tariff went away, we would never see that price drop. So uh, getting on the positive side, um, I know well, we are Xbox users here, uh, you and I, Chilla, uh, but there are a lot of PlayStation 4 uh, people out there. I have a there. PS4. You, oh, that's right. That's right. You're ambidextrous. I have two games. So you can play Spider-Man. And I have a Switch. Well, if you were to get um, EA Access, as our friend Brandon from uh, the KC uh, uh, tells us via um, VGR.com, um, and it, uh, it's coming to PlayStation 4 in late July, it seems. So keep an eye out for this. This is, of course, this is the service where uh, you can pay, I believe, five dollars a month, uh, access to fifty plus uh, electronic arts games. You know, everything from sports to, um, let's see, um, um, Plants vs Zombies, I guess, uh, Sims, Battlefield, games like that, Need for Speed. So uh, big franchise players, of course. Um, but but again, you know, just EA games and uh, other things like that. So so this has been, I believe. Xbox and and I'm right. Is it PC as well? Perhaps. I don't know. I think I didn't. I honestly didn't. I'm not a big EA person. No, no. Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a, the problem is I'm not a sports. Game that's the person. big thing, right? Yes. I love Burnout and Burnout Remastered as part of this. Um, so that is expanding to PlayStation Four. Um, you know, I, I know I've this is on. I'm 99 percent sure this is on Xbox as well. It is, no, it's definitely on Xbox because if you go down your passes, okay. you see Live, you see Game Pass, and then you see EA Access. Also, there's the Ubisoft one. So now we're getting all these subscription services, much like the Netflixification of what we're seeing in video, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so just a little bit more expansion there. I, 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 I like the idea of video game subscriptions like this like i said i was i mentioned when you came in here that i had to renew my xbox live gold today and for a moment i considered their 15 dollar a month thing but man i got so many games backlogged and i don't get time to play them well and that's the thing i find with gold and even playstation in their playstation network mm-hmm. you get the two free games well mm-hmm. four free free games i a get month. i get plenty to play it's plenty to play and, and then I've, like I've, I, I've picked up games that not only play on the PlayStation, but they play on the Vita. So, like, mm. I kind of take them with me. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, um, I like that. I don't know. I, I, I have plenty of, I, I am never if you hungry spend, for content. But I tell you what, if I was somebody who spent a lot of time playing video games, man, that is really attractive. If yes. I'm like, if I'm the person that goes to a nine to five, comes home and plays a couple hours a, a, a night, that is very attractive. Especially, I mean, it, it goes to that, like, I, I can play as many video games as I want right now. I only spend X for video games. Every once in a while, I'll drop a buck or two on on an app game that I want on a phone, or or Mortal Kombat 10 is ten dollars on on Black Friday or something. Mm-hmm. Right? That's basically it. Well, I don't even look at the Steam sale because it got me in trouble. <laughs> you you also uh, as Xbox Gold membership. Mm-hmm. There was a game today that you saw that came out on Gold that you were really yeah, super excited inside. about. Because it, it was a game that I played the trial on the on the on the Apple TV actually, and it's from the people that did Limbo, uh, Play Dead Productions, and they might have done another game too. Um, but it's it was I, I like those little like those little indie games like that too. That's the other thing, and you get a lot of those with the uh, the Xbox Gold. Um, that's why I am actually interested in seeing the ten dollar a month Apple Apple gaming that's coming out this fall. Because if it's going to be games like that, then I'm going to get as part of that. And they play on the Apple TV, I'm hoping. That would be nice. MacBook. And, and you can use your Xbox controller. And now I can use my Xbox controller. A little, that Steel Series is pretty nice that, that I can use on there. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of really good options. And again, you know, I'm not interested in getting Halo 5 because I still haven't beaten Halo 4. I'm not interested in Gears of War 5 because I just started Gears of War 2 a couple months ago. Wow, you're still in Gears of War 2. I it's a good have game. 3 in Judgment as well. Judgment is whatever that like one before 4 was. Um, so I'm cool for a while. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but anyways, um, I need uh, Chilla. Chilla, give me something for a minute so I can take a swig of water before this ad. <laughs> where's, my, where's my notes? Where oh, there notes? they are. 
So can you hit the last thing on the dock? So one of the, and I'm interested in your opinion on this. So okay. Mac, oh, obviously on your Mac, you have a new MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. You have the touch bar. Yes. I don't, none of Not my... because I wanted the touch bar, but because when I buy a Mac, I'm going to spend as much as possible on the Mac so I don't have to buy a Mac for five years. Right. That's the, the strategy. Which, to get the, there is no top of the line Mac Pro with no touch bar. Yeah, exactly. I, I wanted what it was inside the Mac, not the fancy thing, although it is kind of nice to have touch ID. So, yeah, and I would love touch ID. That mm-hmm. would be my, yeah. I, I use my watch to authenticate. I, I bought which is something nice with touch ID a couple of weeks ago on my Mac. And I'm just like, okay, that's cool. But so the dock, they've done, or the touch bar, they've done all kinds of stuff with the touch bar. They've mm-hmm. put Doom on it, they've put. I need to go find that. Yeah, they've put all kinds of stuff on the touch bar. I haven't, I've seen a lot of applications where how the application makes use of the touch bar seems nice, mm-hmm. but from a general utility perspective, I haven't seen a lot of like third party, hey, check this out. So this caught my eye. It's called, what is it called? Switch, touch switcher. Yeah, touch switcher. So it's an application that takes everything that's in your dock and puts it on the touch bar. Mm. Which I thought was pretty cool because this is the the dock for those the uninitiated the, the the line at the bottom of your screen that has all the apps that you can pin to it and your trash can and everything so it just pulls that down into ooh your touch bar wow that is kind of cool but like it, you can tap the app icon and it throws out everything that's in your in your dock mm-hmm. you can hold down the shift key to hide an app hold down the option key to quit an app. Um, it, fits in with your normal volume up volume down all those kinds of things so i i just thought it was a very cool way where i don't have my fingers don't have to fully leave the keyboard area Mm -hmm. and i can tap up and i don't know navigate around without having to to really move my hands that far there's an alternative called rocket as well I have not looked at that. So it's further down in the article. Um, let's say it's a compelling um, alternative to touch swip- switcher that is uh, more customizable. It can only be launched with the command plus keyboard shortcut, though. And Amanda has updated that she is downloading this now. <laughs> so <laughs> on all congratulations. The, there you go. There all you go. of the Macs. On all the Macs. Why, why are all the Macs in the, in the, in the store uh, uh, with this application? Um, I wish I could pull it up on my iPad to install over there. Oh, wait, I can hit download. Oh, this isn't in the App Store. Interesting. Okay, this is just a just a, just a general download. That's a little scary. <laughs> a little bit. But, I mean, Slack's just a download. Is Slack in their App Store? Uh, no, Slack's in the App Store. There's what's, Steam's not in their App Store. Uh, Steam is not in the App Store, but that's from a trusted company. Um, but, but the company has... You get the prompt to see if they signed it with a corporate certificate. True. So, uh, let me know about that. Side note, partially related, if anybody, I don't know if anybody's working in this space, but I need an alternative to Video Monkey. What's Video Monkey? Video Monkey is a great application that will render videos, and it does MP4s, um, I think, better than what Compressor does. Maybe I just need to mess with Compressor and just find a good. Um, is it like Handbrake? Uh, yeah, sort of like Handbrake. It's uh, based on the FFmpeg. Um, oh, yeah. It's like um, Handbrake. Open source. What's that? It's like Handbrake. Which Handbrake is too, but Handbrake is, you know, more specifically for like ripping DVDs, of, of course. I use Handbrake all the time to alter, to recompress and alter mm. already but post-production. It, so it's it's a program that's been, um, um, I think, abandoned for a while in development because it's open source. And I'm wondering if I, I look at Handbrake for the same things, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get better luck. Check it out because I, so. I know the one thing I like about Handbrake is... Um, they have the presets and it'll be like here's the best the the best compression and everything if you want to put this on your iphone here it is for the I, ipad here I it presume, is for your apple so tv here's, here here's my is. problem i got the notice i got the notice that this app needs to be updated ah. um, which is the notice where it when you upgrade to mac os here in the fall that app is not going to work nope so are they gonna? Do you think they'll someone will go out there and update it? Maybe. Who knows? But uh, again, I'm I'm not entirely sure that. And then again, there's plenty of other apps that more or less do the same thing. I just really like how Video Monkey does it. 
Um, let me see, because, I mean, this is like uh, <laughs> version 0.17. There's nothing wrong with version 0.17. Well, I'm just saying it's not, it, it's not version 1. Yes. Let's see. Let me see if there is an update. What's the most recent update? Most recent update on our website is February 14th, 2015. I gar- I I would I wouldn't be surprised if someone after somebody will step up. Someone will step up after it launches and just go and repackage it 64 bit. As long as they don't have to like really jump through hoops. Mm-hmm. Cuz I'll tell you what, Steam wasn't compatible until a week ago. Are you serious? Well, like, they got time. So they I mean, the app, so the funny part was the Steam application was 64 bit. But they have a launch wrapper around it. I think it's the thing that actually checks to see if there's updates or it does something at launch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was getting notifications. Well, actually, I couldn't launch Steam after I upgraded to mm-hmm. Catalina because it was 32-bit. The mm-hmm. launcher portion of it. Well, that's right. You and your public beta. Is it still public on your uh, Mac OS? Yes. What is, what is Catalina? I, I didn't I didn't watch Isn't this. Isn't it a place? I didn't watch this. um. Catalina wine mixer, got it. Okay, uh, it, like <laughs> it, they, it they just, have a picture just, of the island and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense then. Um, again, I didn't watch this keynote at all, uh, so I didn't get all the, the little little bits there. Hey, want to give a shout out to some more friends here, uh, right here again in the neighborhood. We want you to come to Beachview if you haven't been able to tell. Come have some pizza, have some coffee, have a taco, and also visit our friends at Sparkle Jag- Dragons Magical Imperium. Uh, Emporium, Emporium, Imperium? No, that's a Star Wars thing. Emporium. Emporium. Uh, <laughs> they are actually just doors down from our friends at Slice on Broadway. And uh, whether you're looking for a custom handcrafted gift or something to soothe your soul, Sparkle Dragon's Magical Emporium has you covered. So you can stop uh, by their website at sparkledragon.com. But if you're in the area here in Beachview in the south of Pittsburgh, the southern region of Pittsburgh, right on the train line. Uh, if you're in the area, nothing beats a nice cup of tea and a chat with Joyce. Open the afternoons and evenings. Go check them out. SparkleDragon.com right here uh, up the road from us here on Broadway in Beachview. Uh, our friends over there. Thanks for the support. I'm going to support you back. Uh, so, oh boy, here we go. Hey, okay, here's one for you. Here's one for you. I, I thought of you with this story, uh, the story, the, the one at the top there, Chilla. Um, so Google Maps apparently is going to now predict how crowded your train or bus will be in nearly 200 cities. I don't know if this applies to Pittsburgh. I did not see the list yet. But generally, I, I'm, I'm thinking about, now I know you have your, uh, you probably have a, a, a bit of a routine in the morning, Chilla, when you're taking the train in. Oop, yes. I found out. Yeah, and it'll, I'm interested to see how this works so and again we're uh looking at uh it's 18 towns in the uk it has listed here um but there there are plans f- to roll it out in more than 200 cities worldwide so it's one of those things that you know just like all the other transit options eventually it'll probably roll out here in pittsburgh and we'll probably be a little probably a little higher on the list at least for that and we're, we're talking about um yeah transit buses i mean that would that would, that would fit everything in our in our well, what worries system. me is they're going to give this somehow to the like it's only going to do buses and it's not going to do the trains because we have that there is the transit app that or website where mm-hmm. you can kind of get real time the google one or the transit app it's the tran it's like a transit app that the, shows you the green app the green I transit app there's a couple of them. i think yeah that's that's there's, the one that i know pgh bus info which is an independent uh from the port authority um, um but the port authority has a website too where you can their own see thing, yeah where your bus is so you're saying wise. the the buses the buses have the tags but the, the trains, trains don't. don't are you sure about that because i swear i've seen an active train on that transit app let me know maybe it's changed maybe it's changed because i used to at app. one point in time i was using like the crowdsource app where it's like hey please launch our app when you get mm. on the train but also i think the train has like sort of you know gates like it's not just like a hey here it is, GPS wise. Like I, it definitely I, has gates because I mean even our in our area like when it hits the tunnel the light changes on the other side so I can see like here's is the train going to be here in two minutes or is it at least two minutes out because it hasn't even hit Mount Lebanon yet. Here's the question that I have. Um, this is something that I've noticed 
here in Pittsburgh is transit crowdedness mm-hmm. varies. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have your heavy times during rush hour, obviously, in and out of town. And, and then games. And games. Mm-hmm. But, like, there are other times when I would expect it to be super busy and it's not, or vice versa. But, like, today, and this is the, what I don't understand, is you'll get the, you'll get the, over the loudspeaker at the train stop, oh, the trains are running 45 minutes behind. Mm-hmm. Well, the train comes every 12 minutes. <laughs> So, so, so if everything's 40, 12, uh, 45 minutes behind, is, aren't it, they is just it really like, just like three or four? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or was there a 45 minute like gap where there was no trains? Mm-hmm. The thing that aggravates me is a, that because I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. But when that occurs, there's this domino effect of the next if the train is truly delayed, mm-hmm. like th- even I would say 20 or 30 minutes, the recovery time for that is double that before you start to see the crowd taper off. Cause then everyone tries, it's like trying to get on when there's a Steelers game or the, the pirates let out um, or the, or like the pens games. Um, and I don't remember where I was going with this. Be interesting to see, but it's kind of like how we have how busy is this restaurant? Yeah. You know, I, I think it's going to be like that. Can I get a no wait dot com for the train? That's what I, want. I still haven't found like a replacement for no wait. Like I don't know. I know they got bought or whatever, and they just basically disappeared. But I don't know how do I make a reservation at an Olive Garden anymore? You know, it, not that I do too often. Are they on Open Table? Maybe that's it. I I, I thought I downloaded Open Table, but. It didn't seem to work either. I, I was looking for I've it. used Open Table numerous times. But also, it's one of those things where I, oh, man, I'd like to do this thing now. And we're not really ready. Well, and that's where that, but that's where, like, I really like Open Table because I don't think No Way would let you do it. Mm-hmm. But Open Table, so is more reservation versus go get in line type thing. Mm-hmm. And I like Open Table because you can make a reservation when the place is closed. So the one one evening it was like oh, midnight midnight or later, and we were like, oh, we want to have dinner at this at this place tomorrow. Uh, and I was worried about getting a reservation, and what if we couldn't get a reservation? And we'll open table while the restaurant wasn't open. I was literally able to make my reservation for tomorrow before any of the old people could have to wait and call in in the morning. So I had I had my reservation sealed. I was good to go, which is which is what I like. Two two more stories. Oh, I just realized you you were on me this whole time instead of you. There you go. Sorry, I was on you. mute the whole time. No, 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 no. I was I was on me looking. I was on oh. me looking at the next story instead of you explaining that deal. Awkward. Um, sorry, I'm really confused because I'm trying to catch up on Dutter's story here that you put in here. I asked Dutter's and she she's she was occupied tonight, so I was like, "Hey, is she in a shed?" Put a a Dutter's um a Dutter's themed story in here so we can have your presence felt. But be, before that, tell me about Microsoft 1.0. I don't know about Microsoft 1.0. What's the mystery? So th- there's a mystery going. What's around. the mystery, Chilla? So Microsoft started posting on on social media yesterday it's like it, they take their current logo and then they kind of go backwards in time across the logos if you if you go to their twitter feed it's like four or five posts back it was posted. we got it um so it kind of revolves backwards and then it it's like introducing windows 1.0 and it has the old school windows logo mm-hmm. people don't know what this is for or why some people are saying it's a stranger things tie-in um <laughs> some people think it does it's say, a and prank the, t- the tweet says introducing all new windows 1.0 with ms dos executive clock and more which that's more kind of set for the era i don't need to get into that but i am wait for updates they say and it was released in november 1985 so there's not even like an anniversary but I, I guess 1985, Stranger Things, I think, is in 1985 this season, which comes out July 4th. Um, well, we'll see after July 4th if it's related, I guess, right? I guess. So, I don't know. All right, let's talk about um, sex chats. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Dutters one. The Sun UK 
oh, good good history with the Sun UK. VR porn booths in German sex shops let Randy Torres act out their fantasies for a pound a minute. A pound? Is that what that it's is? A British pound, yeah. British pound? Is that what that is? Yep. Um, or sterling pound. Or yeah. a minute, sterling pound. A uh, euro? Maybe it's a euro. You know what? I feel like it's euro. No, that's not a euro. This will be available in 14 cities across Germany. Yes, I can. I double check this, and unless there's something weird on the side. I think we can show this. Um, yeah, so it is a man. I hope they clean us in between. Um, they, it, it's built by German form virtual real pleasure. We're talking about a lot of uh, porn, uh, VR porn, and, and things like that. Oh, those really interesting ads on the side. Um, but uh, yeah, you can. It, I mean, there's always been kind of the film boost, right? And now there's the VR headset boost because. You know, if you're paying a dollar for uh, a film, um, you're not. It should be in VR. You're not. <laughs> it should be in VR. Yeah, I was gonna say you're not dropping a thousand dollars for a setup at home, right? So, um, okay, Germany, you solved that problem. I hope. I find it interesting that the these booths are just big enough for two people. I have a friend that used to work at a, a porn shop here in the uh, Greater Pittsburgh area, and they said there was like, uh, we, and we always uh, you know ask questions of it. Really, you know, I was like. Uh, to her uh you know hey you know well do you have to clean the booths and they're like no there's a guy that does that and he's usually very happy and i was like oh okay so um, it's it's interesting because the booth kind of reminded me oh, podner says pounding the minutes away <laughs> <laughs> the booth kind of reminds me did you see the episode it of- looks comfortable by the way i do wish i had this at home because it reminds me of Dark Mirror or Black Mirror. <laughs> the Black Mirror, yeah. The Black Mirror where the guy, like the people live in the small mm-hmm. enclosed room that's nice all TVs chair. all the way around it. Yeah. yeah that's um, what, it oh, kind of reminds me of that. I love that that image is up and there's definitely a group of people that walk by the window with that displayed. Um, <laughs> they didn't stop and stare. They did not so stop and stare. I don't know. I didn't, didn't, I didn't see the expressions, but uh, that was a family. Um, anyways... Oh geez, uh, it's a good point to remind you that uh, not only do we these do we do we do 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 we do these podcasts, but we also do a lot of other great work in podcasting and video production at Sidekick Media Services. Your sidekick in your superhero project, whether you're looking for custom handcrafted. No, wait, that, that's <laughs> custom handcrafted social media. That's the wrong ad read. Uh, from sporting events to music video production uh, to conferences and everywhere in between, the team at Sidekick Media Service has you covered as a sidekick in, sidekick in your superhero project with the next big thing. Uh, uh, what next big thing can we help you with? You can find out more at sidekickmediasurfaces.com. Of course, we're doing everything from pro wrestling to formula uh, events to... Uh, podcast just like this and even uh, a podcast for some of our friends the caffeinated innovation podcast is premiering season two this weekend produced by sidekick media services great working with the crew over there on that looking forward to that actually if you um if you did like the awesome chats that we used to have chilla um i think this is going to be something you'll like uh because it's 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 a lot of new startups um there, there's uh uh, a bill of life is going to be the company first, um, but there's a lot of great uh, alpha lab companies and talking about innovation here in Pittsburgh and, uh, and, and it's really great conversation so far about half of the season is already recorded in the can. And uh, that'll be going for 10 episodes, I believe starting on Friday. Oh, very cool. So go check that out. And uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really cool thing that we've been doing here in the last couple of weeks here. And it's cool to be part of that. So, a lot of other cool stuff going on. Uh, we will have, of course, another Pittsburgh Current podcast. Um, I know we are recording that tomorrow, and that, that will be going up Thursday. So you will on ha- the Fourth of July. On the You're going to work of- on the Fourth of July. No, I'm going to set a video to premiere on the Fourth of July. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, go check that out. And, of course, uh, more interviews with Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, we have an interview with a new wrestler, Xander Gabriel. Um, Chili, he has a, a LED flashing uh, fanny pack that he comes out with. Um, also, I, have you seen the headband with the with the googly eyes on it? This guy, this guy gets it. Like he is, he is 
doing his own video show. He's like three matches in, and he's killing it right now. So go check out our interview with Xander Gabriel. That'll be on the Indie Mayhem Show, IndieWrestling.us, later this week. And, of course, check out the rest of the network, our friends at Thrifty. I saw one of our friends from Thrifty. He was getting a taco across the street, so I messaged him. <laughs> so uh, so I saw him. Um, our, our friends at Thrifty have been doing a lot of great things. I know they got they had a run with uh, uh, Best in Pittsburgh uh, in the city paper. Um, our friends at the Bardic Mystery Tour, our friends at, uh, who else is running off the top of my head? Our friends at Bold Sports Pittsburgh. I know they, they hit us up in the chat room uh, last week that they're recording. I'm sure they're recording again tonight. Maybe they're taking the week off. I don't know. Does sports still happen on the week of the 4th of July? I don't know. Sports puck ball. Um, but uh, go check them out. <laughs> I should listen to their podcast and find out, huh? Um, go check out everything at the Sorgatron Media uh, dot com. Fishing Without Bait came out today, and uh, they'll be celebrating um, four years of that podcast very, very soon. So, a lot of fun stuff going on. Chilla, where can people find you? People can find me at Chilla on the Twitter, John Chilla on the Facebook. Oh, geez, I can't remember my Instagram. And uh, it's, like sli- it's like Slicer or something. No, or that's something. my email. I think, oh, I think okay. it's just a. Chilla 579. Something like or that. Or Chilla Photo. Look for the Chilla and the guy that looks like him. Yes. Yes. Unless and you're I'm, on I'm on not from France. Not the, the, one, the one that's not from France. Yes. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you uh, to producer Missy. Keeping us straight this week. And uh, we will be back next week, post 4th of July. Maybe we'll have some barbecuing tech tips for you. Who knows? Are you casting the NBC? Don't worry about that right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's for the next show. I'm just I'm just pre-rolling something. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.